So here we are again, America. You and me. I'm back here at the Elks Park in Canby. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the wacky hijinks that I've had recently with the RV. And it may seem like your favorite liquidator has nothing to tell but RV stories, but that seems to be the most exciting thing that I have in the world. And yes, it seems like I'm always wearing the same bloody shirt I'm always wearing, isn't it? So we took off in our RV to Lincoln City, Oregon. If you're familiar with it, you know it's a coastal town. We get there, and we end up spending the night in a motel because... We were really smart and neglected to actually make reservations for an RV park. Now, what I haven't told you yet is the basis of this whole story. The RV is acting up, engine troubles again. But to top it off, the, R the minivan that my wife's driving behind us is overheating. So... When we turn into the motel, I lose my power steering. You ever drive a 28-foot, one-ton vehicle with no power steering? I'm not that strong. And I don't care how strong you think you are. There's a lot of maneuvering you got to do. So we stay in the motel, which is called the Value Inn in Lincoln City. Now, let me tell you something about this place. The Value Inn at Lincoln City was your basic flea bag motel. By flea bag, I mean there's a room with a bathroom and a TV. Nothing exciting, not high end, it has a continental breakfast. And by continental breakfast, I mean. The next morning, they give you some toast and some cereal and some orange juice and say, have a nice day. But I'll tell you, the service there is spectacular. There's a guy there named Richard who worked on my RV. And the problem with the RV at that time was mainly the cables. The reason my power steering went out was because the cable went out. Um, the cables were put in poorly. They were put in sideways, uh, upside down in some cases. They were just sort of slaphazardly thrown in, which didn't just isn't just a problem as far as power steering, but it's also a problem when it comes to um, squeaks. We're getting a lot of squeaks. So I went and bought some cables, and he put them on, and everything was great. And my wife got on the phone and got us to a wonderful little, and I use the term loosely, wonderful loosely, uh, an RV camp place called uh, Logan Road RV. It's over by Chinook Winds Casino, if you know where that is. And Logan Road RV was just horrible. I will never go there again. Management was rude. The park host was rude. I mean, they pack you in like sardines, and you're given this tiny little bench to sit on, a little picnic table to sit on, and right in front of the picnic table is the, um, the sewer hookup for the guy next to you. So you're sitting there eating, and then there's a sewer line hooked up right there on the ground from the RV next to you. You know, it's just kind of not very classy. And they they call themselves a resort because they're part of uh, Chinook Winds Casino, you see. So you have access to their swimming pool and jacuzzi and all that. So that's their excuse to charge you extra money. So, <sighs> yay. We stayed there for two nights, but what really soured me on the place was uh, at nine in the morning, our sec uh, the, the following, okay, so we stay there one night, nine in the morning, the next day, my wife goes to pay for another day, just to make sure that we don't, that we have a place to be that evening. She goes and she pays, she gets her paperwork, she comes back to the um, RV. I hadn't s slept all night because I'm a graveyard guy anyway, so I kind of laid down and kind of take a nap. And I wake up to the, and it's the manager or somebody at the door telling us we got to leave. It's 11.30, got to go. Time to go. Time to go, everybody. Time to go. It's 11.30, time to go. Pack it up, go. <coughs> and 
then my wife's like, go? Oh, uh-uh. I paid for an extra day. You did? Yeah, yeah, you want to see the receipt? Oh, no, uh, and then she slams the door in his face. And so, uh, <laughs> that was our first run-in. Our second run-in was, I have a little bit of a drip in the hose. I grabbed the wrong hose on our way to town. We have like eight hoses. I grabbed the wrong hose, and I grabbed the one that I accidentally kind of nicked with my um, lawnmower one time. And uh, it's got it's a little bit of a leak in it. I mean, it's not gushing out. It's just a little bit of a leak. And this park host knocking at my door, freaking out because there's water going. And I don't honestly care because I paid X to be there. I have use of the water. I have use of the power. I have use of the sewage. So if I want to pull my sewage line and, and let it run for 45 minutes, I can't. If I want to turn on my air conditioner and run my air conditioner for all day, I can't. It wasn't necessary. It was in the 60s the whole time we were there. Same as the water. If I want to turn the hose on, I can. So he's knocking on the door. There's water going everywhere. <laughs> There's water. It's everywhere. It's all over the place. Dude, it's okay. I'll take care of it. Slam the door in his face. <laughs> so I basically uh, then took the hose and I filled up my water tank and we just existed off the water tank the whole time. But I'll tell you, the whole thing just left a sour taste in my mouth. I, I was just done. So the next day, we pack everything up and we drive down to Newport. Now, being a member of the Elks, there's a Newport Elks Lodge. Uh, and you can spend $15 to, to camp in the back parking lot. Now, doesn't sound that exciting, but it's got full water. It's got full power. You're good to go. You're good to go. So we put down camp, said hi to our neighbors. Best thing about Elks Lodge is generally everybody's really nice. And then uh, did our thing. We went to a place called the Hatfield uh, Marine something or other. It's free, so we went there. And it was fun. Our son James loved it, loved looking at the fish. Thinking about getting a fish tank now. Had a lot of fun. The next morning, pack it up. Let's go. Let's go home. Yeah, we were talking maybe, I don't know, maybe spend another night, but eh, it's time to go home. So we pack everything up. We get halfway up Highway 101 where Newport is, and the van just, the minivan, not the minivan, but the RV just <laughs> done. It ain't going anywhere. Won't start, won't nothing. We sat there for four hours while my wife was on the phone with good Sam Club. She got hung up on a couple times. Disconnected. <laughs> then we were told, oh, you're kind of out in the middle of nowhere, so it's kind of hard to find someone who will, you know, uh, come get you. Like, well, that's the... When you're RVing, you're not exactly staying in New York City. You're at RVing, you're not in Manhattan. You generally are out in the boonies. Right? That's the point of RVing. So long of it short, we stayed there for four hours before they finally got a tow truck to us. Nah, it's more like three hours because it took about an hour for the dude to get to us. He was really busy. Nice guy. He towed us to Watipi Park in Lincoln City. Now, Watipi RV Park. It's a camping RV kind of area. Used to be the Elks Lodge in Lincoln City. They shut down because of lack of um, membership. And now the guy who owns the place uh, has it as a regular camping area. Uh, it was $29 to spend the night. I'm an Elk member. They actually gave a $4 discount to Elks members. And so $25, bucks, water, power. There's a dump station on site. And you know what? They towed us right in. <laughs> backed us up. Dropped us off. That was that. It was uh, fun. To say the least. 
The next day, we actually had some friends come up from Oregon City, which is a two-hour drive. They came all the way up to look at our van. Monkeyed with it a little bit. Didn't really make a lot of headway. And then they had to leave. The fine folks at Watipi let us dry camp in the field for free overnight. So we did. It was the first time we ever did that before. And the next morning, my wife gets on the phone and talks to Good Sam Club and says, you know, and here's the thing about Lincoln City. Here's the thing you got to understand about Lincoln City. You go in there and you ask questions. You try to get somebody to look at something. The first thing they say is, oh, we don't do RVs. And then they just turn your back on you. Okay. So if you're an RV owner in Lincoln City, you're pretty much screwed. We heard about a guy named Mike. Mike's mobile RV. He actually goes from RV to RV up and down the town. And we found out he doesn't actually work on motors. He actually just works on the back part. So plumbing and stuff. <laughs> My wife got on the phone to Good Sam's Club and said, Look, if you guys can't find someone to work on it, because we're stranded here. If you guys can't find a, a place for us to work, to, someone to work on us, can I find somebody and you guys pay him? And so the dude, long of it short, they said yes. So thank you, Good Sam's Club. Thank you, because it actually saved us. A guy came out, they paid him whatever they paid him. Guy came out and actually worked on our RV. The problem turned out not to be the fuel relay. The problem turned out not to be the two little screws on the carburetor. The problem turned out to be uh, the vacuum seal on the lines. So he plugged them up best he could. Because, um, you know, he's kind of on the run. He's, he's not in a full shop and we're kind of out in the middle of a field. So he plugs these things up best he can. Uh, in the process, we find out that our back gas tank is, is filled with rust because our fuel filters are brand spanking new and now filled with rust. So I got to drop the gas tanks. I got to find someone to drop the gas tanks, drain them, filter out the rust, somehow seal up the gas tank so they don't get rust in my fuel anymore, and then put the fuel back in. <laughs> but that's, uh, that's beside the point. So we throw everything in the van. We throw everything in the RV. I don't even remember what day. We've, we've stayed an extra two or three days. Three days, I think, at this point. And we take off. And, you know, we're, we actually did okay coming home. The RV handled it very well. The best it's handled doing over 40 and forever. Uh, the minivan, on the other hand, we were having problems. We just have to keep buying coolant and putting it in there. There's two very small drips coming out. And of course, when you have it on and you're doing 55 for a two hour trip, it kind of goes faster, but you know, you're just trying to make it home. So our friend Lene was nice enough to wire some money. Cause by this time we are broke. I mean, like broke. We weren't expecting to be gone for that long. So she wired us some money and, uh, you know, took care of us and made sure we got home, which we did. Thank you. And that was our story. So I told my wife, I said, here's the deal. I am going to write a book based on our RV wacky adventures. So I'm going to start taking wacky RV adventures just to write a book about it. That's everything. And I think that's pretty much my story. So the moral of the story is Value in Lincoln City, wonderful. Recommend it to anybody. Okay. Logan Road RV, stay away. Hate it. Stay away. Being an elk is awesome. I'm the only one here. My family and I, we're the only ones here. Good Sam Club came through for us. Thank you, Good Sam Club. Last but not least, Matt Stryker hates you. Have a good day, everybody.